Welcome back to Illness Scripts Pencast. Today we will be discussing another great topic frequently encountered on board exams, post-infectious glomerulonephritis, or GN. When breaking down the illness script for post-infectious GN, you need to understand the two different levels a question could be asked. The first is to have you simply identify that a GN in general is the most likely cause of kidney injury in your patient. The next level would be questions that make you differentiate between the types of GNs. Predisposing factors are less specific in this disorder, but more commonly seen in children than adults. Not as skewed as some other disorders, though, so don't exclude this diagnosis if the patient is still an adult. As the name suggests, this GN occurs after an infection. The most commonly associated infection is the group A strep, but staph and gram-negative organisms can also result in this GN. These patients will often report a preceding infection at least one week prior, but up to six weeks prior in cases of strep skin infections, to the current presentation. This distinction is one of the most important of the history, because IgA nephropathy can present very similarly, but often more concomitant with the infection within a couple of days. The staining will also be markedly different on biopsy, but we'll get to that. The next part of the presentation will be the part common to many of the GNs, edema, and hematuria. This case is an example where an absence of a history finding is also very important. In two other causes of GN, pulmonary findings are often part of the most common, or rather classic, presentation. Granulomatosis with polyangiitis, formerly called Wegener's granulomatosis, and good pastures disease, a type of anti-glomerular basement membrane or anti-GBM disease, both of these types of GN are not likely to occur in children as well, so that's another indicator for you. Exam findings will show hypertension and edema. The triad of hypertension, edema, and hematuria is quite classic for GN. Keep in mind, you are not likely to see evidence of active infection at the time of presentation, as it has been at least one to six weeks since the time of the inciting infection by the time your patient is presenting with the GN. Lab findings will also provide you with complement levels to help clinch the diagnosis. In post-infectious GM, C3 is low, C4 is usually normal. C3 is part of the classical and alternative complement pathways, but C4 is only part of the classical pathway, which is not activated in post-infectious GN. Thus, C3 is converted to the active or cleaved form, which is C3A, thus decreasing measured levels of C3 in the serum. The classic pathway is not involved, so C4 levels will remain normal. In IgA nephropathy, C3 and C4 remain normal. Urine is also characteristic for GN when it includes RBC cas and dysmorphic red blood cells. Now, keep in mind, while these are very suggestive of GN, don't exclude the diagnosis of GN if these are absent and your pretest probability is very high. Anti-streptolysin O or ASO antibodies are often positive if the preceding infection was strep, but don't exclude the diagnosis if this is negative since the infection could have been non-strep as we talked about before. So this would be a good time to briefly review the different types of GN. The major categories are immune complex mediated, posse immune, and anti-GBM. These categories are named based on the staining characteristics under microscopy when stained for different immune markers. The major immune complex mediated GNs are post-infectious GN, IgA nephropathy, lupus nephritis, cryoglobulinemia, and membranoproliferative GN. Posse immune literally means few or no immune complexes, and the two major types are granulomatosis with polyangiitis, or GPA, like we've already talked about, and microscopic polyangiitis, or MPA. As we discussed before, as well, the major anti-GBM glomerulonephritis to consider is good pastures. Imaging would usually only consist of a renal biopsy, if it's provided, And based on what we have just learned, we should be able to predict the findings. In post-infectious GN, the glomerulus would stain positively for C3, but not for C4.
Thus, an ideal illness script for post-infectious GN would read, A 10-year-old boy with strep throat one week ago presents with diffuse edema, gross hematuria, found to be hypertensive, edematous with RBC casts and dysmorphic RBCs in the urine sediment, with serum C3 levels decreased, C4 levels normal. Renal biopsy shows sub-epithelial deposits on electron microscopy, which will stain positive for C3 on immunofluorescence. Please like the video and remember to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Submit comments on future topics that you would like for me to cover. Until next time.